Hi, I'm Candace Gordain. This is Fitness and Harmonies. Stretch to relax or to rest and reset. Our muscles and our, our body tends to forget movement patterns, but what it remembers is thought patterns. So thought patterns go on repeat and they bring us down but our muscular patterns go on forget. So there's muscles right now that are contracted for no reason other than they stayed contracted. That was the last place you left them for some reason. And then there's muscles right now that you can't really contract for no other reason other than you forgot. You didn't need it, so you stopped using it. What yoga teaches us is pratyahara, which is the fifth limb of the yoga practice, which is withdraw your senses from the outer world, bring them to the inner world and explore. To do, this is where your concentration and this is where your work is. We become overwhelmed by the senses of the outer world. We're always paying attention to screens. We're always paying attention to social interactions and we, our minds forget that there's an inner world. So we're gonna take this mind, turn it inward, forget the outer world, and then we're gonna remember we're gonna re-remember the muscles that you forgot. So I'm gonna list muscles today and tell you to hold this muscle and move this muscle really for no other reason than to bring your attention to it. We're not gonna memorize the poses. We're not gonna memorize the anatomy or the physiology of the body today. We're just gonna bring attention. That's it. Just like when you just kind of say, wake up. <laughs> it's just this here. So actually let's start here. Bring the hands together kind of a few times like a clap. But bring the thumbs to the heart and then swim the shoulders up back and down now rock the pelvis forward and back and then come to a straight line so sit up tall draw a string up through the crown of the head now all i really want you to do here is push your hands together quite hard as you're pushing quite hard imagine if we were in hands and knees pose and all of your hands would be holding the weight of your body where would your weight in your hands be? And how hard would you be pushing? As you're doing this, you might be able to tell me what muscles you're working, but maybe you can't. I don't need the names of them. I don't even necessarily need the location. I just need the feeling of them. So is it around in the palm? Is it around the heel? Is it around in the forearm? Is it in the, the bicep or the chest? Or is it even the neck or the jaw that you feel that? Now I want you to clasp your hands if they do this number where they can hook onto each other and pull and just keep pulling. And in fact, I want you to pull harder and harder. This is an exercise in the awareness of what muscles are you using? What muscles are you actively relaxing? That's our goal for today, to actively learn how to relax muscles so that when we choose to actually relax, maybe it's time to sleep and rest and reset, we actually can. Now do both. So push, palms together, push. If there's another way to hook your hands, hook them a different way and pull. Put the palms together and push. Hook the hands and pull. Now when you put your palms together, squeeze your abdominals. So even your hands are pushing, don't stop doing that. Squeeze your abdominals. Then when you hook your hands, pull up on the pelvic floor muscles. It may take you a second to find them. So hands together, abdominal squeeze, push, or I guess pull the abdominal muscles. Hook the hands, pull, pull up on that banda, the mula banda, the lower pelvic floor muscles. Again, push the hands together, squeeze the abs around the waist and around the belly button. Hook the hands, pull, squeeze the pelvic floor muscles in and up. Okay, release all of that for a moment. Let the palms rest down. Lift the crown of the head, but close the eyes. Now in the time we stopped doing those other things, what did your muscles go back to doing? Some of your muscles stayed active in holding and some of them went right back to relaxing and not doing anything. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Ujjayi Pratyahara now. I invite you to bring your mind from the outer world where there's those other things 
into the inner world. So close the curtain around you. And begin the hard work of inviting yourself to participate in the authentic feelings of the body. So when I say feelings, I mean both the motor sensation, like pressures and pains and movements, but I also mean the feelings of being a human. Emotions, perceptions, and even, yes, thoughts. So it turns out as you're inhaling, Ujjayi exhaling, that thoughts go on repeat while your muscles forget. Some of them hold, some of them just sort of permanently forget. Your thoughts go on repeat. So chances are whatever things you were thinking this morning are still going around. And every time you stop paying attention to your yoga, your mind goes back to those auto replay thoughts. So when I say withdraw your senses from the outer world and bring the light of attention to the inner world, I mean acknowledge the thoughts, the feelings, the human emotions. Don't bypass them. We do that. We want to get right to the feeling of Shavasana bliss. <laughs> and it's like we think, well, we'll just program the best feeling first without clarifying the negative feelings that may reside already because they will come back and come back and come back. You think you can ignore them and they'll just go away, but they won't. Now redirect your attention to the muscular interactions going on in your body. There's some muscles that are just holding you up. If they weren't, like when you get really tired at night and you collapse, you would collapse like a marionette. So there are some muscles. I want you to pay attention today to the oblique, the sides of the waist that are pulling in from the sides up towards the opposite shoulder. Squeeze those oblique muscles. Now holding that, see if you can pay attention to the diaphragm muscle. It goes down when you inhale. Clear feelings of the mind body. Then open your eyes. Let's warm up these legs a little. I'm going to come off my bolster and bring the feet in front a little bit. And then I'm going to lean back and windshield wiper the legs and the hips side to side. Inhale and exhale to breathe into the hidden muscles. The hidden muscles. <laughs> what I mean by hidden muscles is I'm going to, for example, choose the psoas muscle. That's that big hip flexor muscle. It's hidden just because we sort of put it on auto stress. If that were a setting in our body, auto stress. We put it on auto stress, auto contraction, and then we leave it there. We never check that setting again. So that's what I mean by a hidden muscle. It's doing the last thing we told it to over and over and over again because we haven't consciously or even subconsciously given it a new direction. Now, some muscles, when you do that, they just forget. They forget their muscles <laughs> and they just stop doing it because it would be expensive to pay attention to everything all of the time. So it's a process the nervous system calls pruning. It gets rid of, it actually like kind of cuts off memories or thoughts or connections to muscles. Come back to center. I'm going to lean back a little bit further and then widen the knees and bring them together. So hold now the low back muscles. Here's another hidden muscle. I almost feel as if all the muscles of our back are hidden because it's really hard to conceive of what back muscles even do. I got nothing back there. So why would I have muscles that I need to hold on to? So muscles on the back typically run up and down and then diagonally. So the up and down muscles help you extend, you know, to lift the low back 
forward. So try that a few times. Squeeze those low back muscles. When we contract a muscle, that's kind of all we can really do is contract a muscle. So we're going to contract the opposing muscle from the one we want to stretch. You can't stretch or relax a muscle. You can just stop contracting it and then contract the opposing muscle. Let's walk these legs out and forward and then bounce the legs around. So the nervous system works several ways, but one way it works is mechanical input, meaning something is doing something you know, physically to it and it feels that and then it does something. Usually it contracts out of, out of protection. Good, then just flex and point at the feet. You know, I've been working on the bottoms of my feet, so I'm gonna keep adding that in. Then do that thing where you push the hands together. So now I've asked you to do several things. I've asked you to flex and point the feet and feel the back of the legs, because we did that little shaky thing. And now I'm asking you to push the hands together. Now remember this, the pull of the hands, the where you hook and pull apart. Now do, you know, one and then the other. So alternate. If you want to coordinate the feet with the hands and the pushing and the pulling, go ahead. But the point is, we're not used to these a weird pattern like this. And so you're having to use muscles you don't normally use to reawaken the mind. Because I asked you to invite yourself to participate in authentic feelings. And then bring one knee and interlace the hands and pull. So now I want you to direct your attention to the upper back muscles that are squeezing together. So use your hands to squeeze those muscles together. And then release. Let's go over to the other leg. We'll take one leg in. Squeeze. So those same upper back muscles, but this time I just want you to be more aware that there's muscles on the back of the shoulder blades. So squeeze those upper back, almost like you're taking the outer edge of your shoulders back rather than squeezing from the middle. The back has many layers and layers of muscles that crisscross and go deep and superficially. But I want you to see if you can awaken. That's what we're doing today. We're awakening muscles so that when muscles act, actively stretch, they release endorphins. Endorphins are chemicals created by the body hormones and neuroendocrine chemicals that tell your body what to do. Quite literally, tell your body, this is the message, this is what you're gonna do. Endorphins are the good ones, <laughs> the ones that are the feel good chemicals that pulsate through your body. So we're noticing the outer edges and I'm noticing one shoulder more than the other. It's almost as if one shoulder wants to do all the work. I don't know if it's because it's the same side or I just, this shoulder is the one that pays attention more. Now remember the muscle that wraps around the waist, squeeze that around more and then lift the crown of the head up more. Now this leg that's stretched out in front of you, push it down into the floor. Use that energy of the pushing this leg down to shoot, to rocket the spine upward. Remember the outer edge of the shoulder blades pulling back. Okay, three slow breaths. Good. Exhale. And then release. Let's come around into hands and knees for a moment. And move from cat to cow, cat, I want you to pay attention to the feet. So in cat, push the tops of the feet down, almost like you're going to levitate your knees up off the floor. Use that much pressure. Then when you flow into cow, same thing, but tuck your toes under and push. Again, like you're going to levitate your knees. So cat, tops of the feet press, cow. I'll call this the bottoms of the toes press. Now co-contract the lower part of your abdominal. So think about from your waistband down to your pubic bone, there being a triangle of muscle there. 
Now, buried beneath that muscle that I'm talking about, I'm actually talking about transversus abdominis, if you want to look it up in your book. But buried beneath there is the psoas or the iliac psoas muscle group that's kind of holding your leg in this fixed position, holding the leg and the hip in this 90 degree bend. If you can find that deep muscle, don't know the name of it or where it attaches, just know that there's a deep muscle in there. You can almost think of it as the contents of your pelvic bowl. That's how strong and important and actually kind of big it is. Then grab your blocks if you have blocks and set them up in front of you, hand width, shoulder width, arm width apart, and then smash your hands into them. I just set them up, oh, I don't know, a foot in front of me and I'm smashing my hands into them, smash. Remember this business we did of pushing the palms into each other? It's essentially what we're doing here. We're activating, so I want you to figure out what muscles you're activating. If you're pulling back, I can kind of see some of you are pulling back, kind of like a puppy pose. That's fine, that's fine. Just notice what muscles are keeping the arm set in the shoulder socket. So don't let this arm become disjointed. <laughs> so something on the back of my arm is contracting. I feel that. And something underneath the armpit is contracting. See if you can feel that. Maybe drape your head down if there's room for your head. Take three breaths as if you're trying to elongate your spine. What we're trying to do today is dissolve the attachment that muscles have gotten out of just a pattern of either holding too long or not holding at all. Let's come up to hands and knees, so probably move those blocks you know, on either side of the mat and then flow your way into a downward dog. So slowly, actively breathe your body. Remember that your body is made up of just the trillions of little pathways for the blood that end up in little tiny little capillary the size of a blood cell so that the blood cells can get into all the tissues of the body. So it has to be quite small to get into all those little places while carrying its luggage. It carries with it oxygen and other nutrients and then it has to have place. So if you've ever moved, you know you need it like extra space to bring in the new stuff and take out the old stuff. Do three slow breaths. Right now, so many muscles are stretching that you may not be noticed the ones that are holding or vice versa. You may be only noticing the ones that are holding. And then walk forward and hang. Walk your hands up to your knees, kind of sort of halfway up. We're going to just notice the hands on the knees for a second. What I want you to do, I'll face you, is Push with one arm. Let's see, what happens when I do that? Let's see, I should sort of turn in that direction. Is that what happens? I don't know. And then release. Push with the other arm. I don't know. Notice at first I resist it. I resist it more than anything. I actually drop that side. Interesting. So do whatever your body wants to do, but just unevenly push with one side or the other and see what happens in the rest of the body. Does the rest of the body move? Or does the rest of the body resist? That was really interesting. Mine resisted. It's like, I'm not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna push back on you. So our body also has a natural pattern <laughs> of either holding or releasing, but it's not even throughout the body. Some parts of your body are just gonna always want to resist. Some parts are gonna always want to just let go. It's not even. So do that. Push evenly into both arms. Now, Theoretically, if you were pushing really hard and your rest of your body was relaxing, you'd just push all the way up, right? So I don't know. If you can, from here, hook your hands under your thighs, if you can reach, right? Try that and pull. And again, if your body weren't resisting, your chest would come all the way down, I guess. Or I guess your legs would flip up off the floor. So now go in between that. Push the palms onto the thighs. 
Then wrap your hands around and pull your hands up from the thighs. Push and then pull. Now use this energy to lengthen the spine. Oh, we have a guest speaker here. <laughs> Finny is coming in for a second just to, just to say hi. Now I want you to notice what's happening around the waist. I, I pointed out transverse abdominis and the oblique muscles. Are they becoming active? Now push into your thighs. This time rock the pelvis under and then roll up through the spine. Good, 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 good. Let's take the left foot forward, angle the right leg back, turn your hips to the side. Just take a second to set and reset this. So left foot forward, all five toes pointing forward, the heel in alignment with those toes. So no wonky twisted foot, but the back leg, back foot is pointing out, let's say 40, 40 degrees or so, not all the way out, but not all the way in. Then I said, take the hips to the side. So to do that, I have to push this front left knee and kind of hold it there so that my back right hip can turn. From there, practice leaning forward, find that stretch, and then leaning backward, find that stretch. Breathe as you move. So now we're getting into those hidden muscles, as I'm going to call them. The muscles that you don't normally actively think about or even talk to. Is, oh, I better move my psoas. I'm about to get up. Or you don't, even, you don't even think I'm going to contract something around here. You just think I'm getting up. My eyes, my head are getting up. That's what we think in terms of. Or I need to get my whole body over there. Or I need to get my hands around this thing, <laughs> this beeper that's going off. I need to get my hands on that. Now begin bending and straightening this front knee two. So I'm giving you two joints to play around with. There is the hip joint, where how these legs are interacting with the psoas muscle. And now there's this front knee joint. That one's easy, it's pretty simple. All right, I'm actually giving you a lot to work on here. Maybe it doesn't feel that way because maybe your muscle, your mind has forgotten to interact with the oblique muscles and the psoas muscles. Think about like from the ribs to inner groin, I guess. One way to think of it. The back ribs to the front inner groin. Right, I'll straighten this front leg and hold. Reach the arms out and hold. I gotta get level here, I was leaning back. And then practice reaching the ribs forward and then back up. Reach and come back up. Reach, so the hips aren't going anywhere. This is the spine doing sort of this, I don't know, <laughs> undulating movement up the spine. Hold forward and hold. Now, tip forward, I'm gonna bring elbow to knee, that's enough for me. Strips this top arm to the sky, turn the eyes, maybe the face up to this palm that's facing the side, and hold. All right, now just breathe this oblique muscle. Remember, I wanted to pay a little bit extra attention to the oblique muscles and the psoas muscles. These hidden muscles, they're really support muscles. So just like your brain, supports thinking and supports, oh, I guess, talking and getting things done. These are the muscles that connect feelings, emotional and thinking feelings, to action. That's a big deal. Three, two, but wait, there's more, don't go anywhere. I want you to contract this side waist muscle for a second. So find the this flesh, the stuff on the side of the lower waist and squeeze it. You don't have to go anywhere, but this should open up the opposite side. So this is what I mean by actively opposing muscles are stretching another muscle. This muscle we can't stretch. We can't stretch any muscle. We can only contract and stop contracting. Turn to this front leg. Now be careful. The hips are gonna swivel and turn. I'm gonna bring my hands to this front leg and hold. So more and more and more, this top waist 
is turning, like it's gonna look at the front floor, the front foot. Then try straightening the front leg, sending the hips to the back. Be careful here. Don't put all of your weight on this front leg. Keep your abs, so these lower abs, middle abs, and around the upper middle back, holding. Three, press through the feet. Use that energy to shoot energy, rocketing up through your spine. And one, bend this front knee so you can push up and come back into Tadasana. With the feet shoulder width, hip width apart, sit back into chair pose, so hips back, arms forward, but from chair pose, bring the palms together and push them together. Now remember to hook the hands and pull the hands apart. Hands push, hands pull. Keep going. So as you're going between pushing and pulling, what is happening with the legs? What is happening with the back? What is happening with the chest? What is happening with the psoas muscle? Anything? Now just do the push, hands together, and squeeze the pelvic floor muscles. Three, pelvic floor muscle squeeze. Two, pelvic floor muscle squeeze. And one, come all the way up. Let's shake out those legs. You feel those legs, so shake, shake, shake. So we're back to awakening the nervous system. So another way we can wake up the nervous system is just by sort of batting it around, just like moving the, the body around. So that's part of what yoga is doing. But then yoga invites your mind, pratyahara, pull your mind into the body. Let's do the same thing, right leg forward. Step the left leg back. Right toes pointing to the front of the mat. Left toes pointing off at a 10 o'clock diagonal. Now turn the hips to the side, the long edge of the mat. Settle these hips. Now I'd have to take this right knee and push it back because it wants to just turn and, and collapse inward. So I'm gonna push that as I'm pulling the left hip back. Good. Hold that. What I notice right away is my left glute is as tight as a, I don't know what, it's really, really tight. It's trying to take on all. It's trying to do everything for this back leg and a little bit for the front leg. So now I'm gonna actively talk to my abdominal muscles and say, what are you supposed to be doing? Do it. My front leg, what are you supposed to be doing? Do it. That means all the muscles, all the muscles are contracting. Then try tipping forward and tipping back. I really feel this. For me, it's this left medius, medius here, the side of the hip, really keeping me bound. That's good that muscles get tight. They're actually just protecting you from movement patterns that might actually hurt you. But if we can get them to all move evenly, like a bodysuit that's elastic everywhere, not just in one place, but everywhere. Now begin playing around with this front knee. So it maybe straightens as you tip or it straightens as you lean back, one or either. Actively contract muscles. You can think of what they're called. Just think of leg, what are you doing? Can I contract you now? What would happen? Mix it up. Don't just do the same pattern over and over. Play around with moving more deeply. Contracting, like what if I contracted this back ankle as I was coming up? What would that do? It's all connected. It's okay. Then straighten, I'm sorry, bend the front knee and hold. Lean toward it. I'm gonna take this hand to the inner knee this time and push. Then stretch this top arm up and hold. So I'm pushing quite hard with my right arm. I'm pushing really hard into that knee and that's opening up the chest. 
then do you try straightening the front leg? So hinging into this triangle. Become aware of the alignment from the hip to the shoulders. So you're not tipped forward and pushing your hip out behind you. We're not doing this four-legged triangle. Two more breaths. What's my back leg doing? My back leg's like almost sliding out from under me, so I'm gonna squeeze it and pull it in. Then do bend the front leg a little, turn the chest toward us, so turn to the, what I'll call the front. Keep, keep kind of turning, you know, like if you had a tractor trailer and you had a couple of cars behind it, everything has to go with you. Then try straightening the front leg. That sends the hips back, ring that bell. One of our goals of yoga is to release endorphins and it's really almost like a magical thing that we do. We stretch the muscles by remembering how to contract muscles so that we release endorphins, so that the mind gets bathed in the neurochemistry of happy. Two more slow breaths. Rest and reset. Push off this knee as you bend it. Step forward into Tadasana. Wow, one more time, one more chair. Let's try that chair one more time, then we rest and reset. So chair pose with the hands pushing. Chair pose with the hands pulling. So focus this time, whether you're pushing or pulling, on the pelvic floor muscles, Mula Bandha. Mula Bandha squeeze, Mula Bandha squeeze, Mula Bandha squeeze. So we have this whole symphony of different muscle groups having to figure out which note am I supposed to be playing? I'm not supposed to be pulling, I'm not supposed to be pulling, but the Mula Bandha is squeezing regardless. Mula Bandha squeeze, Mula Bandha squeeze, then come all the way up. Wow, <laughs> who knew? I gotta shake out this foot. Somehow that got my foot all contracted. Whenever you're done with that, rocking. And <laughs> we're gonna make your way into downward dog. So you, I usually do that with a flow. Breathe, breathe. Once you get to downward dog, lift up onto your toes, rock both heels over to one side so you're on the edges of your feet, and then push back from there. Okay, remember that oblique muscle, the side of the waist? One of them should be really stretching right now. The other one, the other side, squeeze that, almost like you're trying to lift your hip up into your ear. Let's go the other way. So roll over the toes, Drop the heels off to one edge. You're on the sides of the feet. Then push your hips back. Second verse, same as the first, right? <laughs> this side is opening. Well, the other side now is actively contracting. Roll back to the center. Come all the way down to child's pose. Your choice. Are you pushing the arms down or are you just resting? Just breathe. We've gone through an orchestra of stretching and contracting in order to reawaken the hidden muscles, the attachments that your mind muscle has made out of protecting so that you can invite the self, the highest mind to fully participate in the self. So we're clarifying. Clarify with the breath. Mm. 
with the breath. No other time during your day do you just follow your breath or reprogramming. It's almost as if the mind watching the breath was a muscle and you're flexing that muscle, if you go with me on that. You're doing something. Do that two more times. And then come up. We're gonna come into a supported back bend. So once you come around, grab your blanket, <clears throat> your blocks. This is how I'm gonna set mine up. It doesn't really matter what you're using. You're just trying to create kind of a ramp with the muscles, I mean with the with the props. So I'm gonna take one block under my blanket and then the other one, I don't know, at the edge. In other words, I'm just creating a ramp so that when I lay down, my mid back, my low back, mid back, but especially my upper back has this big thing pushing into it. So it might be a block, it might be another folded up blanket. And the only thing about the head that is required is that it not be too far back. So I'm gonna turn my block up a little higher. So it's a ramp, it's going up, but mostly we're pushing the chest up. Got that? So if you have two or three or four blankets, Keep folding and refolding and repositioning if you just have the blocks. One block across your shoulder blades and then the other block holding your head. Then stretch the arms and the legs kind of out like a, a starfish and see how that feels. My arms want to be down. Yeah, it feels better for me having my arms down. It might feel better for your back to have your feet still on the floor. I want you to find this place where you are in a supported back bend. This is called a supported back bend. Now from this pose, squeeze your upper back. Remember in the very beginning we were like squeezing, remember I, we were pulling on the shin and I said pull the shoulder blades onto the back kind of what you're doing. Squeeze those upper back muscles. Notice you need your abdominals to do that here. Then relax that and just breathe the front ribs. Now, if you feel supported, if everything's okay, nothing's falling over, you might want to try bringing the soles of your feet together and letting your knees fall open. I like that because that gives me just enough little crunch in my low back. My low back always needs a little bit more togetherness. I have hyper mobility. My low back and my sacrum move too much. So I like when they're being pulled together like this. So if you're in this position with me, squeeze the outer hip thigh muscles like you're trying to push your knees down to the floor. Squeeze those outer hip, outer thigh muscles. At the same time, if you're in this position, push your outer edge of your foot, the outer edge of your foot down into the floor. See if you can put those two things together. Outer hip are kind of widening your knees and then the edge of your foot is pushing down as if your foot's gonna swing down in through the floor. That activates the whole outer region of the leg. Then relax that. Same as before, breathe the front ribs as if your front ribs are getting thinner, like they're not bones. 
they're like just, I don't know, like elastic sheet. Relax your shoulders. That little thing we did with the legs and the feet, did that make the shoulders contract? Maybe. So relax the shoulders, release endorphins, those feel good chemicals that I am good. One more breath here. And just in time for Shavasana, <laughs> here's Phineas. So if this is too good to come out of, then stay in it. Some people really like that support it. Back then, but I invite you to come into Shavasana now. For another breath or two, stay disconnected. from anything outside. Now feeling a renewed sense of intelligence throughout your body. Inhale deeply. Hold that breath. And let it go. Begin to roll onto your side. When you're ready, open your eyes and then press all the way back up. Moving back up to a seat, pressing the hands a little bit together, connecting the thumbs to all of those dots in your heart. Just take another breath there, just like you're soaking it in. Like it would taste it, it felt too good not to take another shot. And then lift your head up, open your eyes. Inhale and reach up, absorb everything. As you exhale, you and I come back together, rested and reset. Namaste.